Yo, 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 what is up, what is up? What is up? Just had to get some water, guys. It's time to run that intro. Oh, yeah, what is going on, everybody? Chana D, your techno dad here, of course, the techno dad. What is going on? Live stream Saturday. I feel like I haven't done one of these in forever. So uh, thank you guys for showing up. Hope everybody's having um, a good, uh, what are we in, February? Oh, we're almost out of February, actually, right? We're in getting into March soon. Crazy. 2019 is already flying by so, so, so fast. It's pretty nuts. Who do we got in-house? What's up, LP? What's up, Pote? What's up, James? Toby Hines, what's up? Mr. Singh, what's going on? Techno Bismol is in the house. God, I love that. Every time I see that, it makes me laugh. Philip, what's happening? Ricardo, Desert Raider, what is up? Alton, what's going on? Ernie, what's up? What's up? What's up? Um, hopefully everybody's doing well. I imagine you guys can hear me pretty pretty good as well. Do 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 do. And make this window a little smaller here. All right. So in today's live stream, for those that are here watching right now, for those on the replay, um, a few few things I need to mention about the 80 hertz crossover frequency video that I forgot to mention um, in the video. And the first thing is that I'm not using the power of the AV receiver. I'm using the power of the Parasound Halo A52 Plus. So... You know, I got a lot of comments saying, won't that, you know, lowering the um, crossover point put more strain on the AV receiver? And yes, it will, because the AV receiver now has to power more bass. And for me and for everybody else that uses a power amp, that's not going to be an issue. But for you guys, excuse me, for you guys uh, using an AV receiver, then yes, it will. Um, you will. It will put more strain on the AV receiver, but that's okay, you know. It's not going to be used, like, a whole bunch of time. Anyway, uh, I got a whole bunch of good response, a whole bunch of bad response from that video, so it's kind of kind of like a toss-up. Um, but uh, if that helped you out, please um, let me know, whether in the comments of this video or in um, the actual video. But, uh, yeah, I am I'm stoked to finally do something. Here with you guys. Uh, another thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is the new merch. Check it out. Shoot, wait. There we go. So this is my system, right? It's my receiver, speakers, subwoofer, and 4K player. So um, <clears throat> what's up, Sandeep? What's up? What up? What up? So yeah, I got some new merch, and I'm uh, excited to show you guys about this. Do, do do where is it at where is it at come on internet work with me <laughs> so yeah i'm also um not just making not just making this one but for you guys as well let me jump into the store here and show you what is up with this? This is not working. All right. Do do do. Javier, that's uh, 80 hertz for your uh, main speakers, for tower speakers. What's going on, David? How are you doing? Mo Vizi, what up? What's up, Randy? What's going on, guys? Um, Alton, I was thinking about selling my Oppo 203. Do you think it's too late in the game to upgrade to the UB9000? Um, or do you think dice are done? I don't know, man. Um, I'm about to sell my Cambridge CX UHD. I finally got my... Um, Oh, discs. Do you think discs are done? I don't know. I think there's a huge market for disc owners. I still love discs, and that's kind of, you know, that's me. I love discs. So, um, 
I'm going to use my discs for sure. What is going on? Oh, there we go. It's not wide enough. There we go. Now it's working. <laughs> now it's working. Okay, so um, what's up, Enrique? What's going on? So, yeah, I, I wouldn't give up the OPPO 203 for the UB9000 because um, of playback. Playback. That's really the situation. The OPPO will play back more. Or, sorry, the OPPO will play back more. I got to I gotta start saying it right. OPPO, right? It's like it's Porsche, not Porsche. It's OPPO. So, I got to start saying it right. So, that's kind of... Um, the situation there, um, I will be getting a UB9000 in to check out, to check it out and see what's up. James asks, can you run room correction with a separate amp like for LCR or do you have to connect them to the AVR then reconnect the amp after you run room correction? Well, James, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. If you want your system to be balanced, connect the external amplifier, then run your room correction. If you want the front end to be boosted, then I would, and I've done it before, it's kind of like a little trick to get more power out of the front end, is to run room correction with everything attached to the AV receiver. Then, once that's done, connect up your um, front stage to your power amplifier, and you get, you get more. But if you want a fully balanced system, then run it with the uh, power amp attached. That's what I would say. Uh, Sandeep, just bought a X4500H from Fry's and was wondering what you recommend for crossover frequency for two front 280FA, center 62, two, and sub is a PB1000, I'm thinking. Um, I would say play around 280FA. I would probably put those around 60 for your towers. And then your, um, you know, Atmos channels are kind of rough, man. They don't they don't really tell. Those Atmos ones, the ones worked with Dolby, they don't really tell, like, how well... Um, I'm sorry, they don't really tell you what the frequency response on those is because they do some, like, witchy-woo to make the bounce happen. Pew! Pew! The bounce. I'm, try I'm bouncing it off the ceiling. See that? <laughs> anyway, um, to make that happen, they have to mess around with the frequency. So they don't tell you the frequency response of Atmos channels. Uh, that's why I like using uh, the prime elevation speakers because they're pretty much just bookshelf speakers with a little slant um, to help get to the proper angle to get to your ears or whatever. So I usually cross mine over at 100, but if you're using the ones built in, I would go with 150 for those. Um, as far as your center channel, I would keep that somewhere around s 60 to 80. I don't know what the um, frequency response is on your center channel. And as far as the uh, PB1000, the SVS subwoofer, I would go with uh, setting that to LFE and setting your LFE and your AVR to 120 hertz. That's what I would do. Uh, Nick Parr, when do you think to start installing HDMI 2.2 and AV receivers? Um, when 8K TVs start becoming more and more on scene. Right now, we just have the one from Samsung, which is super expensive, and there's only one uh, HDMI 2.1. Is it 2.1 or 2.2? It's 2.1, right? Yeah, it's 2.1. HDMI 2.1, they only have one port on it, and that's that. <coughs> <coughs> oh, what's up, Tony? What's up, Darren? What's up, El Jefe in the house? Blue 5.7, what's up? Hey, thanks for watching the videos, guys. I, I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, so that's why I'm making these shirts. Let's let's shift over. We'll come back to 80 hertz. So I'm making these new shirts, right? right? And this is, boom. This is my system right here. It's a Denon AVR, Klipsch speakers, SVS subwoofer, and Oppo 4K player. Now, not only do I have that, I also have Youth Man system here. This is this shirt's called the Youth Man. These are all on my uh, merch shop on Teespring, teespring.com slash stores slash technodad. Anyway, here's a uh, Youth Man system. It's a Marantz, Marantz AV receiver, Klipsch speakers, SVS subwoofer, and a Pioneer 4K player. And I even have the Spare Change. You know Shane from Spare Change? Well, this is his system. It's an Integra 
uh, processor, MNK, Miller and Kreisel THX speakers, uh, SVS subwoofer, and um, an OPPO 203. So the reason why I'm showing you guys this um, is that I want to make some shirts for you guys too. So tell me, you know, shoot me either in the comments um, or in the chat of this video. Let me know if you want me to make a shirt of your system, you know, and try to keep the same, like, you know, the top is going to be your AV receiver pre preamp processor. The second one's going to be your speakers. The, sec the third one's going to be your subwoofer. And the fourth one's going to be the brand of your 4K player. So that's kind of like the idea here is I'm going to, you know, you want to feature your guys' stuff on my shirt. Sound cool? I mean, I think that's a that's a cool idea. So you can be repping your shirt like I rep my, uh, you know, you can rep your system on your shirt like like I rep my system on my shirt. Why not? <laughs> um, so that is the new merch that's on the store. Um, let's see here. And I'll get you guys a link to the store in just a second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Harold, I think my dog's coughing up something. Oh, uh, he seems to be okay. Anyway, new shirts are here. And uh, like I said, if you guys want a custom-made shirt with your system on it, uh, what's up, Mr. Mad Skills 407 Skills with the Z. Uh, let me know. Definitely, I'll, I'd be happy to design a shirt with your system on it so that uh, you can sport your system and your love for home theater. Because that's that's why we're here. We all love home theater and sound. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yamaha and Klipsch and Polk and Sony. There we go. Expert Joey. All right, buddy. I'll, I'll make I'll make a shirt called the, the Joey. And um, you can buy it and sport it up. Decibel Destroyer, what's up, Techno Dad? What's your pick on 65 inch TV under $1,000? If you're talking about 4K, man, it's going to have to be like a Chinese TV. It's probably going to be a TCL. Uh, Hisense has a lot of new uh, 4K TVs for 2019, and they looked very promising. They looked really cool. Um, um, yeah, I think, I think that's the way to go. What is your take on Onkyo receivers? Asked Darren. You know, it's f I, I, s I had a good experience with the TXNR676. I would say that the um, the um, NR787 is a good buy at, you know, what was it? I think it was, here, let's share the screen here. The TXNR787. Oh, it's down to 500 bucks. It's THX certified and it is nine channels. I mean, you can't go wrong with the pricing. And I had um, a great experience with with mine, uh, which was the TXNR676. Uh, I've heard that they have like some issues here and there with uh, HDMI, um, like their HDMI board going bad. I haven't experienced that, but this used to be six hundred dollars, or sorry, sorry, seven hundred dollars. Now it's down to five hundred dollars, so um, that's pretty cool, especially if you're looking at a nine-channel receiver or for a five point two point four Dolby Atmos setup. I have a nine-channel Atmos setup, so that's, you know, I mean, I wouldn't mind testing this out. I just have to buy it because nobody at Onkyo answers the phone or my emails, so. You know, it's kind of lame, Ankyo, but hey, you know, this is what happens. This is what happens. Got to buy some stuff sometime. Where is, there we go. All right. El Jefe, you're in the market for a budget 4K Blu-ray player to TCL 5 series. Yeah, I am the guy to ask. Um, So far, right now, TCL, you got Dolby Vision. Does that one have Dolby Vision? I would recommend... Either the LG or the Sony. Now, Sony is coming out with a new um, player. It's the X800M2. It's going to support Dolby Vision finally, and it's going to have the same like good build quality as the last X800. The X700 player from Sony, I think that thing's a pass altogether, so stay away from that one, Hefe, for sure. Stay away from that one. So LG UBK90, 
or wait for the new Sony X800 M2. That's, that's my recommendation. James, uh, spare change may keep the adrenal speakers. Adrenal? Yeah, maybe. Enrique says Ankyo and Klipsch. Kale, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, Techno Dad in the flesh, sort of. Timothy, what's up, buddy? Which has more power, the 1080 or the Onkyo 6776? I think um, the Sony STR DN 1080 seemed to have more power than the Onkyo TXNR 676, from what I remember. Been a little while, though. Uh, Mad Skills, I need help. We finally got into a new TV. Problem is budget is under $1,000. What size do you want? And do you need 4K? What kind of streaming or OS platform do you like, Mad Skills? Oh, never mind. I just answered it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think the TCL, um, TCL is coming out with the new. The they they're finally coming out with the 65 and 75 inch um, R617 this year. So look out for those. They made. There's a whole big deal about the 65 inch TCL and their quality control because they had a whole bunch of issues with the panel last year. So they didn't make a new. They did not make a new R6 series uh, this year for 2019. What they did was they refined, um, I believe, I talked to the guy at CES, and he said that they got a new plant in the United States, I think, and it's a quality control plant, and that's where a lot of the TVs are going to be made. Um, wait a second. Was that in the U.S.? Oh, man, I don't know. I, I got to ask the guy again. I'm not sure they're made in America, but anyway... The quality control has been stepped up a lot. It's gone higher. So I would imagine that the new TCL 65-inch and 75-inch are going to be pretty good this year. So I'm going to contact the guy to see if I can get one in to review for you guys. Because, you know, that's what I do, right? Expert Joey says the Onkyo quality and reliability is not what it used to be. I see. I see. I mean, I've had Denon for like a long, long, long time. So, um, actually, I still have some of those AVRs. They're they're at they're down at my mom's house. I'll I'll take some pictures and and post them up on Facebook or whatever uh, <laughs> about all the Denon equipment I have like collected throughout the years. It's pretty crazy. There's still a lot over there down in LA. What's up, KL Hall? What's going on? Um. Uh, Christian asked, what do you know about Dolly speakers in U.S.? Well, um, trying to work with somebody at Dolly to get some speakers in for review. I finally got some, um, I've got some Dyne audios coming in. i um, pretty excited about that. And that's kind of like the new project I'm working on. I'm working on a project. I'm glad I could tell you guys this. Let's kind of move into this part. Moving into a project on... Bookshelf speakers in the $1,000 to $1,500 range. And I've got about four of them are on the way, if not already here. Um, I have two of them in-house. Two of them are on the way. And I'm waiting on three other manufacturers to say yes and send me some speakers. Um, um, and I know it's funny. Some of the manufacturers are like, well, we don't want to compare our $1,000 speakers to a $1,500 pair of speakers because... In theory, you know, it should be a better speaker if you pay more. I'm like, well, you know, uh, it's all about the sound. I will be doing sound demos and A-B testing, depending on which ones you guys want to hear. And I'll show you those speakers in just a minute. Let's try to get through this chat and some more questions. Uh, what's up, old school funk? What's going on, man? Yeah. Uh, just lurking and listening. <laughs> yeah, I just had some extra bass traps. So I just tossed them there, man. They're, the bass traps are actually here. Um, there and there, because this is my, um, this is my mixing area. So there's, there's the bass trap in the proper place. There's another one over there that also goes down that far. Um, and then as you guys can see, I got more, um, got more Oralux there, got some on the ceiling. It's all this, this is all just for mixing, um, um, music. Mixing, not like DJing, but actually like producing music, right? And here's the, here's all my, these are all my toys. If you guys didn't know, yeah, I make music too. Like the song that you hear all the time. That's my song. 
So yeah, old school funk. I just tossed those two up there because I had them. They were there and they were just sitting there. So <laughs> whatever. I just put them up there. They don't do anything. They just sit there. Um, where was that comment? Oh man. Oh, there it is. Enrique, I got the seven eight seven for five forty nine at Best Buy in November, and no HDMI issues as of yet. Awesome, man. Uh, Jordan C, should I get Klipsch RP two sixty F or two eighty F? You know what, Jordan? I went through that same same debate, and you know what I did? I went big. Right, go big or go home. Well, guess what? Now you can go big, go home, and listen to music. <laughs> um, yeah, I would go with the two eighties. I thought I thought space was going to be an issue with the 260s, but the price difference and the more punch you get out of the 8-inch woofers, I would go with the 280Fs. And I think you should actually get um you probably get them on a good deal. Definitely go check out uh Corey, see if he has any more. Um he may or he may not. Um Let me just drop a link to Why is this not working? Oh my gosh. Oh, here we go. All right, so if you guys wanna buy any Klipsch speakers, any Parasound amplifiers, I just dropped a link into the chat box here. That's my dealer, Corey. Um, tell him Techno Dad sent you, he'll hook you up. Uh, Timothy, asking because I wanna buy one. Oh man. Where is this? Oh, okay, gotcha, Timothy. Yeah, you know, out of the two, the Sony STR-DN1080 and the Onkyo TX-NR676, I would go with the Sony. I would go with the Sony. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Retro Force, what's up? Hey, no problem, El Jefe. Expert Joey says, TCL 6 Series is the best bang for your buck TV out there right now. Yeah, still is. Still is. I, I can't wait to see what the 65-inch uh, is going to gonna be about. Techno Bismol, Onkyo Receiver, Audiophile Speaker, Surin Vega Subwoofer, and Xbox is my only player. All right, Techno Bismol. I'll figure something out with that. Um, Best crossover for Klipsch RP280 Main, RP450 Center. Hey, Tony, that's exactly like the system I had, man. That's exactly the system I had. That's funny. I would do 50 or 60 on the Klipsch um, towers. I would do 60 on the center channel. And the surrounds, keep it keep them at 80. That's what I would do. Ray McQueen, what's up, man? Any news release date on the Panasonic UB450? That's not, oh, the 450. I, I haven't heard about that one. I know that the um, there was the 320, the 420, 420, uh, 820, and the 9000. Out of all those four, the UB820 and the UB9000 are the only ones sold in the United States. So if they are releasing one called the 450, maybe it's not for the United States. Maybe it's for other parts of the world. Don't know. Uh, James pa says Panasonic is introducing OLED this year to the United States. Really? Is it? That's that's awesome. I had a Panasonic Plasma before I got the OLED. Panasonic VT60. It was the Kuro killer. If you guys don't know what a Kuro is, it was like the best flat panel ever made for like, I don't know, like 15 years, something like that. It's craziness. Expert Joey says 4K Blu-ray is better because it's not compressed. And he's talking to Christian. All right, cool. I'm good. You guys are answering other people's questions in the chat. Love it. Love it. Love you guys. Love this community we're building here on the YouTubes. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, Sandeep Denon, 1400H today for $250. Wow. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think? Should I make a new video about a home theater sound for $1,000? Is that a good budget? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? $1,000 budget for a 5.1. See if I can help out some more people there with the receiver. Yeah, of course. Uh, 
Robert, hey, Chano. When will you start seeing IMAX receivers and your thoughts uh, well, compared to Atmos? Well, the funny thing you mentioned that, I guess I haven't announced this, but uh, Denon is sending over the new AVR X6500H. And hopefully the IMAX enhanced update will be out while I have the receiver in-house to review. So, um, yeah, that'll be cool. Um, I'll definitely tell you the differences between Atmos and IMAX Enhanced. Now, the only thing is I have to make sure that I can get a disc that has IMAX Enhanced and a disc that doesn't have IMAX Enhanced. Otherwise, I can't, can't, can't compare it. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, Mini Moog. Yeah, Old School Funk. Yeah, that's the Moog. Um, Model D, Mini Moog Model D, and uh, and the one above it is the new one. It's the Moog Semi Modular Grandmother. Got that guy. Uh, yes, Francis. My bad. Uh, Corey also sells SBS as well. What's up, Kunal? What's going on, buddy? Um, and then, um, yeah, man, I'm trying to do this live techno music project. You know, just trying to work on some new stuff. That's all. Uh, techno, tough decision. I'm going through SVS 5.1.2 setup or Klipsch 5.1.2. Which one would you go with? Ugh, 49ers. It really just depends on the speakers, man. You know, uh, you guys always ask me, like, which one's better, Klipsch or SVS? Like, they're totally different, and they have totally different sound signatures. You got, um, aluminum dome tweeter on one end, and then you've got, um, um, horn loader tweeter on the other end. Those make a huge difference. Like that sound is totally different. Also, efficiency is 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 different. Klipsch is going to be more efficient. SVS not as efficient. Those horns really make the speakers efficient. You know, 98 dB efficiency versus 88 decibels of efficiency. That's tough. You know, with uh, speaker sensitivity. You know, how many. Um, watts you put into it, you know, how to power it and how to get that sound, the desired sound where you sit, like that's, that's a huge thing. So I, I say if you are, if you have a good power amp, go with the SVS. If you don't have a good power amp or you're just using an AV receiver, I would go with the Klipsch. That way, you know, I don't know, I, I again, I don't know how far away you're sitting back from your room, but that would kind of determine which one, those two factors I think would determine which speaker you would go with. I mean, that's the best I could say without knowing what you listen to, what you watch, and all that kind of stuff, and how, how much volume is in your room and how far you sit away from your chair. I mean, your TV or front stage. I sit 14 feet away, so I need a power amp. Plain and simple. All the speakers, no matter how efficient they are, with an AV receiver, not doing it. I need a power amp to get the sound that I want without cranking it up. So, so here's the thing. When you crank up the volume on your receiver to like 70%, 80%, 90%, you start to introduce more um, harmonic distortion into the um, into the speakers, and we don't want that. We don't want distortion. So that's kind of that's kind of like the issue. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say. I mean, it's it's tough. Uh, in the in the end, it's uh, it's all up to you. It's all up to you. But if you want to email me, uh, Technodad55. Oh, it's right there on the ticker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, technodad55 at gmail.com we can get into some details and um, I can better understand your situation and better help you or better advise you that way okay um, Christian I just bought the Emotiva Base XA5175 really happy no problem with heat run 8 to 12 hours a day you know that's um, an amp that I was trying to get from Emotiva um, they've they've been there, there, it's a little rocky over there with all of their uh, PR people. I think they're just kind of just jamming through PR people left and right. Um, the reason I say that is I got an email. I've been asking for a an amplifier of theirs to review, and it's now changed hands. But hopefully, I asked them for the XPA nine since I have a nine channel um, Atmos this, like setup that makes sense, right? So they're gonna send a nine channel XPA. Nine uh, generation three over to the house for me to review, so I can't wait for that. Um, but in the budget range, I know that's like a two thousand dollar amplifier, but in the sub thousand dollar range, the A5175 is the one I've been recommending for a while. So I'm glad you got it. I'm Christian and I'm glad you uh, having a good time with it. That's awesome, good to hear. 
Noah, what do you think about having Micah MB42 bookshelf speakers as surround speakers? I think you can pretty much, you know, as far as your front stage being uh, matching speakers or at least matching brand, that's cool. For surrounds and Atmos, you could probably go with pretty much anything that fits your budget. You know, if decor is a thing and, you know, you got all, you know, you got that waff to deal with <laughs> the, the wife acceptance factor. You have to deal with that. Then definitely uh, look at something in your budget and something that looks nice and something that'll work. You know, um, you don't need anything to go down really low as, you know, you're probably going to be crossing over your surrounds at 80 hertz anyway. So, um, yeah, check it out. Try it out and see, see how it is. I mean, you can always return stuff these days. Uh, dude. Hey, Techno. Did you give a thought about cable management video that you suggested? <laughs> oh man, my cables look like ass, you guys. Um, I the whole back of my system just ugh. And and it, I also have cables that are there just to like you know when I get a new 4K player, I gotta put it in. So I already have uh, an extra HDMI that's just ready to go. So I have a bunch of cables that just aren't doing anything there. So. And it's kind of messed up, but hey, you know, I'm trying to help you help out everybody on the YouTube and the internet and you guys, my subscribers. So I, I kind of, you know, cable management's just not something I'm ever going to tackle unless I have like an actual room with like a, you know, like a closet for equipment and stuff like that. Then, yeah, I would do that. But for right now, no, nah, dude, that, that's, that's, that's F that noise, F that noise. Mel, what's up, Mel? Hey, love your channel. Have you heard of? anyone having problems with the LG UBK 90 mine tends to freeze brand new discs randomly thanks actually um yes I I have had uh, I haven't had any freezing problems but I do have lip sync issue problems usually with Dolby Vision discs like Saving Private Ryan I I didn't even know like halfway into that first scene when they're storming uh, the beach at Normandy that something was happening like there's there's like I don't know you know, like the, it was just totally off and I, I couldn't understand what was going on. Then I stuck it into the Panasonic UB820 and, then, and it was fine. Um, played that again on the um, on the Oppo 203 and it was fine. So there's something wrong with I, I don't know if it's the LG player and Dolby Vision discs or is it just the new Dolby Vision disc? Because I put in an older Dolby Vision disc, you know, um, what was it? Kick ass was the name of that movie and that one um um it, w it worked fine there were no lip sync issues so i don't know if they've changed like the way they author these discs but something's up something's up um 49 49 or thousand dollar budget do it oh okay you guys like that thousand dollar budget all right i'll do that technically 4k blu-ray is compressed it's just at a higher bit rate if it was uncompressed it would be many terabytes this is true noah usually they use prores 422 or 444 um <laughs> old school funk home theater sound for thousand dollars <laughs> sounds like jeopardy <laughs> hey you know i'm just trying to help people out at different budgets you know um speaking of which I wish I had this this ready to go, but I don't. So that's just the way. Here we go. Do do do. Sorry, guys. Give me a second here. Uh, 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 uh. All right, so we're going to jump into um, a little thing here. All right, you guys, so here's my new project. Uh, the title says New Project. We got we got through new merch. We got through some of that. I'll, I'll come back to your questions. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to do what y'all think I'm going to do. Flip out, man. Um, Sorry. 
I watch a lot of movies, or I have watched a lot of movies. Where is this? Why can't I just get... Do they not sell this on Crutchfield? Okay, so here's what's happening, guys. I am going to share my um, screen here. There we go. Boom. All right. Here we are. SVS Ultra Bookshelves, $1,000. I already have these in-house, so that's great. But guess what's coming? Boom. These guys are coming. Definitive Technology Bookshelves, $1,000 a pair. These guys don't aren't sold anymore these are already in-house these are here kef sorry not kef kef r300 i actually just unboxed them last night and i'm listening to them gonna give you guys a quick review hopefully on monday or tuesday maybe tuesday and um they actually are not available on crutchfield anymore i think there's still some on amazon yes they are they are on Amazon, and they're going for thirteen fifty-two. Oh, that's used, and used, used, new eighteen hundred. So they're, they're normally eighteen hundred, but I got them th for thirteen hundred, brand new. Uh, where's this walnut one? Are used? Oh, these are all used, huh? Oh, that's lame. That is really lame. Well, what's happening is Kef is like replacing them, and so I bought them because they're in my little price range. So well, here's what I'm doing. Here is what I'm doing. Uh oh Here's what I'm doing. I am reviewing speakers in the $1,000 to $1,500 price range. Bookshelf speakers, I, I want to kind of open up the channel to more brands. So I'm looking at Dyn Audio. Oh, that's right. I forgot to show you the Dyn Audios. Derp. And these guys are coming in from Dyn Audio. They are sending these over for me to check out and be part of the whole speaker comparison thing. So cool. Good job, Dyn Audio. Of course, Def Tech is also sending these over. Um, SVS has already sent these over. So um, cool. I had to buy these. That was kind of, that hurt. That hurt. $1,300 hurt. Um, still waiting on a few other um, speakers like the... Um, what is it? The B and W seven oh seven S two. That's another um, speaker that I definitely want to check out, especially in this price range. Mm, excuse me. So yeah, here we go. I'll show you this. Do 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 do. So these are 1200 for the pair, not including stands, obviously. Um, so this is going to work in that situation as well. And um, I think there's another speaker. I just couldn't figure it out. Well, I can't remember right now. Why did I not have this set up earlier? I have no clue. What is it? Oh, yeah, and the Focal. Focal Aria 906. These run for 1500 and these are going to be on the higher end of oh these white ones look pretty sweet higher end of the spectrum so yeah so i'm going to review this this these guys the dyne audios and i'm waiting for bowers and wilkins i'm waiting for the focals and i'm also waiting for the wharfdale riva 2 which oh look at that they were $1,000. They're down to 700 Look at that. Oh, that's a great deal. It's a great deal right there. Anyway, that's the new project that's happening, and I'm really excited about it because I want to get more different, you know, more different. That doesn't make any sense. I want to get, well, I actually do. I do want to get more different speaker brands on the channel because, you know, I can't just be living in Klipsch and SVS all the time, right? All right, let's get back into this chat and these questions. So, yeah, I just want to tell you guys that's what's happening. It's really cool. A lot of these speakers are being sent to me now, which is fantastic. I do have to buy, like, one or two pairs. Um, and, uh, and I actually talked to the good folks at Kimber Cable. They are sending over some cables. Um, and they know my philosophy. I do not believe in spending uh, exorbitant amounts of money on cables thinking that the cables will actually make the sound better i that that i don't that no 
I, I do not buy that. However, I do believe in quality as far as uh, build quality. And these are the cables that are coming on through. So you guys know I'm a sucker for braided cables. This is like braided cable to the max. Like this is this is like the braided cable. Um, and they're, they are expensive. Um, but look at that. That's awesome, isn't it? Like 16 wires. And I think, what is this? This is this is what they're sending, the ATC. And do, 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 with bananas on, on either end. And so it, it ends up, it adds up into two nine gauge conductors. Okay. So they're sending those ones. And um, what is the other one that they're sending? Hold on. Let me find it. Let me find it here. 8PR. So they're sending the 8PR. They're sending this with an internal by wire. So what that means is, boom, it's got two on one side and then four on the other. That's pretty cool. Again, this is like still the braided, um, braided cables, but this comes out to 10 gauge on each end. So that's what's happening there too. So I'm pretty excited to check out all this cool stuff. Um, and thanks to Kimber Cable as well for uh, agreeing to be part of this project and sending me those cables for me to check out and use with these products. Because not only, not only guys, am I um, going to be reviewing these speakers, I'm going to be making audio demos of the same songs for each of these speakers so that you guys can hear the difference with all these speakers, especially if you know, you're know you looking for uh, speakers in this price range, definitely uh, gonna be cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven speakers. I think seven speakers, right? Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that and I did wanna you know mention that to you guys because you can't just live in Klipsch and SVS all day. I mean, they're all they're great, they're phenomenal, but there's a lot more out there and there's a lot more technology, there's a lot more, um, you know, materials used in making speakers that give a different sound. So it's great to, uh, you know, for me to check all those things out and then, you know, let you guys in on the fun as well. All right, let's get back into the comments here and questions. Uh, L LP Hode. Um, so the uh, Sony UBX, UB, UBP X700 does have DV. Does a UBK90 have DV? Yes, the UBK90 does have Dolby Vision. Sandeep, wondering where to buy those Atmos calibration DVDs or sampler DVDs to compare the sound with Atmos and without. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one. Tony, what type of sound dampening would you recommend? You know, in, in a room like here, this is a music studio, so... It's a little different. You know, I can put random stuff up on the ceiling like you see behind me and it's, it's okay. Um, you know, acoustic panels for like your living room is one thing. Acoustic panels for your home theater is cool if you have a de dedicated home theater room. But basically, you just you can just build a frame and put some fabric around the frame. You can fill fill it with something if you actually make a box. Um, but um, there's a there's a bunch of different DIYs. I know Youth Man talked about it on his. That Home Theater dude talked about making his own. I think he walked you through what he made. So you can check out their channels and see what's up about acoustic panels. Uh, Techno Bismol. So I only have the Xbox One S as for mention as mentioned as my only player. So what do you suggest as a 4K, preferably with streaming? Uh, a player, 4K Blu-ray player under $200, man, I would save that $200 until you had $500, and I would go with the Panasonic UB820. That's what I would do. I wouldn't spend $200 on a 4K player. Big Kane, 23, what's up, man? I watch a video with Spare Change and Brass Tass talking about if this is the year to buy a TV, then I'm thinking about an LG E9 uh, because of HDMI 2.1, but still not 12-bit, so... Oh. You know, I don't think, see, see, that's the thing. You know, I, I think a lot of these manufacturers are just going to wait. They're just going to wait. It's getting cold. Uh, they're they're, they're going to wait. They're going to give you one thing, then they're going to wait a year or two, and they're going to give you another thing so that you constantly have to, like, wait to buy something. And it's hard to say 
if HDMI or if 12 bit panels are actually on, uh, you know, coming down the line anytime soon. That's something that I have no idea about. So, I mean, I can't really tell you like to wait or to buy now. That's just, that's just too hard. I, I have no idea. I can't speculate that. Cannot. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. You could buy now and roll with it or wait. But who knows? You could be waiting like five years. And do you want to miss out on all the good stuff in that five years? So, you got to kind of like weigh that. Um, hey, TD, just checked. Ankyo says 210. Sony says 165. Oh, for those AV receivers? Oh, are you talking about power? Um, excuse me. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell, you know, in my room, though, listening, I felt like the Sony had more power. That's what I based my answer off. Excuse me. Randy, what would be a good crossover for the SBS Ultra Bookshelves for left and right? Also have them for my side surrounds. <laughs> wow, really? Ultra Bookshelves? Um, SBS Ultra Center and SBS. Hey, I had that system, too, in here pretty good let's let's look at the crossover frequency where is this why does this not tell you on amazon oh i gotta go to svf site sv sound all right let me instead of just looking at me walking around we're gonna let's just okay speakers ultra bookshelf All right, so 45 is what it rolls off at normally. Oh, you can't see that. There you go. 45 is where it rolls off normally. So I would go with, I don't know, try it at 60, try it at 70. You could even try it at 50 if you wanted to, and then see how it is. You know, compare your favorite movie and, you know, change things up and see what see what's happening. See if it sounds better. You have dual S. You have dual PB two thousands. Yeah. I currently have all the main at ninety, and the prime elevations at one twenty. I would go with keep put at the bare minimum. Put everything at eighty. Your high channels. I have my. I have the same speakers you do. I have mine at one hundred because they can handle a lot more. Uh, Monster SV. What power amp do I use? That's an easy one. SV. I use the um, Parasound, Parasound Halo A52 Plus. Do 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 do. This guy right here. Um, this is what I'm using. And why can't I? I can't go any lower on this. What is going on? Um, hey, I can't get this to work right, so <laughs> this, this is what I'm using, and I'll just tell you the specs are 180 watts RMS, five channels driven into eight ohms. If you're running four ohm speakers, five channels driven is 255. It's a lot of power, lots of power. So that's what I'm using there. Uh, monster and I, I if you looking into Parasound, I um, scroll up on the chat. I put a link to uh, my dealer Corey. He's got uh, he's got all that stuff for sale. The movie A Beautiful Planet has IMAX enhanced. The Blu-ray it comes with only has DTSX. I assume that would help you with checking the difference uh, sound wise. Just a tip. Hey, thanks, Kale. If you guys haven't seen his channel, definitely check it out. Um, can I even mouse over? What if I, can I highlight your name? Does that come up on the chat? I don't even know. Maybe down here. Nope, no, it doesn't. But thanks for the tip. <laughs> oh man. Um, James asks, "Are you still snowed in?" I'm like, "There's a whole bunch of snow. Not snowed in, but there's still a whole bunch of snow." Timothy, how does the measurement work? Um, you know, they don't actually, all these, uh, all these AV receivers, uh, the manufacturers, there's no standard in 
uh, wattage and power. So they're just going to kind of tell you what what their lab has told you. So it's you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Like they're not all the same. A lot of the amplifier manufacturers will tell you exactly how they tested. Um, like they swept from you know what 220 hertz to 22,000 hertz and you know they use pink noise instead of white noise and all that kind of stuff so it's different per manufacturer so it's kind of hard to you know tell you know is a 10 watt difference going to make that much 10 advertised watts is that going to make that big of a difference um is 50 in your case 50 watts 45 watts actually going to make a difference i don't know um, if you see my video about how to how much power do speakers need, you're going to have to double wattage just to get three decibels uh, uh, higher sound. So it depends, I guess, on what you're looking for. Um, I like the Sony over the Onkyo. The, the Sony STRDN1080 I like a little bit better than the Onkyo TXNR676. Tim, what's up, man? How are you doing? Mm-mm-mm. The elevations are my Atmos speakers. Nice, Randy. Yeah, no, totally. I would put those at 100. Mo Vizi, what's going on? Um, Klipsch 8000F, 600C, 600M, or SVS Prime Towers Center and Bookshelf. Uh, Mo Vizi, I would go with the Klipsch in that situation. Um... Do 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 do. <laughs> Any recommendations for eight inch ceiling speakers? Not yet, but I will look into those for sure. Why not? Mm, shoot me an email, Sundeep, if you want um, anything specific or right away. It's going to take me a while to get to some videos. I got a lot of product to go through here. Anderson C, I'd go with. Oh, no, you're not talking to me. <laughs> Ceiling speakers, unless designed for Atmos, will be wanky. Really, Anderson? The drivers have to angle toward you. Yeah, actually, a lot of ceiling speakers, you can adjust the, the driver and angle it. Would you review the Philips 4K Blu-ray player? I think that thing is just garbage, but, I mean, I can. Um... That one has a lot of uh, compatibility issues with discs, so I would stay away from the Philips player altogether, guys, just so you know. The problem with home theater, it's so addictive. You never finish. You don't want to stop buying new stuff. Yeah, Christian, that's that's definitely the case. I mean, I was content with my home theater for about 12 years and then I started upgrading and that's when I started the channel and that's kind of how everything started going for me so yeah uh, 49ers ask Anthem ARC or Denon Odyssey which is better in your opinion hands down ARC that's uh yeah there's a lot more going on better separation but at the same time you know that scene, the um, Ready Player One car race scene was fantastic. I like. I felt like there was more information in the surrounds. Uh, I knew where everything was coming from, so the separation was there. But the, there was like this cohesiveness as a whole with all nine speakers running. So I would give it to Anthem Anthem Room Correction over Odyssey, because Odyssey is also in the Marantz and in uh, other things. I think. Dodge guy, I'm in the process of converting my theater system into Atmos system. I built a 19-foot-long audio cabinet that will house a speaker, subwoofer, etc. I'm using ceiling speakers for Atmos. Super stoked. Dude, that sounds awesome. I'm stoked for you. Uh, shoot me an email with some pictures when you're done. Technodad55 at gmail.com. Because I'd love to see it like when it's finished and, and what's being, when it's being built. So shoot me an e email with some pictures. Yeah. Tim, I have a Marantz and Definitive Technology uh, and an HD Center Surrounds. Nice. Pro Cinema 800 subwoofers. You got a pretty awesome setup. 7.2.4 sounds like a plan. I think it sounds great. Wondering if I if you could recommend a good crossover setting. Oh, that's why you're saying all that. 
You know, I Pro Cinema 800 for height speakers. And BP 840 are your surrounds. What are you using for mains? Oh, left and right SM 445s. I don't know. I'd have to look all of that up. Why don't you shoot me an email, Tim? Technodad55 at gmail.com. Shoot me an email because that's going to be a lot easier for me to handle via email. And Anderson says the lowest your fronts can go. Sup, Chico Stick? What's going on? Techno, can you review the e ELAC Unify or what do you think? Uh, ask Den in Theaters. Well, I listened to them over at Joe's, Joe's place. Joe from Joe and Tell uh, was in Burbank, and I got to listen to the ELAC UB5s, the Unify UB5s, and they sounded phenomenal because they have a three-way design. You know, they have that concentric uh, driver. If you guys don't know um, what I'm talking about, we'll just ELAC Unify UB5. Um, let's check them out on Amazon. Oh, there was my video about it. If you search it, you'll see my video about it. It's right, right here. Um, I was at Joe's place listening to him. And we both talked about what we liked about them. But it's a three-way design because they use this concentric um, tweeter and mid-range. And then you get your woofer is actually just all about the bass. All about the bass. So they're good. I, uh, would I review them? I mean, I listened to them. I did a quickie review. Um, and if for, for $500, like, that's a pretty good deal, man. So I would say just jump on it. Um, I'm thinking about some B&W or Paradigm to replace my front stage. Cool. Which ones? I would go, I would go with the B&Ws over the Paradigms though. From what I've heard from both companies, I would go with the B&Ws depending on what series, but the, even the new 600 series sounded fantastic. Oh, heard them at CES and they were great. Old school funk. Admire your passion knowledge. This chat is awesome stuff. Actually... Physically taking notes. <laughs> you are a HT and home theater encyclopedia. Hey, thanks. Old school funk. Hey, man, been doing this for a long time. Been into this for a long time. Um, you know, it's just one of those things, man. 25 years. Hello, how's it going? How, hey, how do you like him? <laughs> Kale. Kale says, what? Techno Dad, you listen to music without Audio Quest vodka cables? Yes, I do. I don't, you know, you know, I don't like to... Yeah, exactly. Um, Jinx, I make my own six gauge, four speaker cables, half inch thick. Dang. Wow, oh, awesome. Yamaha and SVS and Xbox S. <laughs> All right, Toby. I'll make sure to make you a shirt. Call it the Heinz. Carlos Cruz, what's up, man? How are you doing? I'd get generic cable. Nice. Love your channel, by the way, Jinx says. Thank you, Jinx. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I have the SVS PB4000. Did some testing. Found out sounds better in the back of my room. Should I get a 50-foot XLR cable or the SVS sound path? Um, I would... I would go with just the RCA cable. If you have specific XLR outputs, do you need two? I think you might need two. Do you need a left and right? I have no idea about that. I'll have to look that up at some point. Um, decent banana plugs. <laughs> any bass shakers on this site? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. Ha I don't have any bass shakers. Tiny teapot. One Kimber cable is four hundred twenty-five dollars. Yes. No. Or. or I don't know. Let's see. Oh, because you I was at the buy now page. Let's see. Buy now. Um, let's go standard and let's let's pick the um uh, single. Uh six foot. Seventy eight fifty. I'm having them send me nine footer of the internal by wire. So a pair is 226. And then the other one that they're sending is uh, 
453 for the pair of eight foot. Um, but I think they make, um, I definitely need, think they make, I'm pretty sure they make speaker cable that goes up to like $10,000. So yeah, not, not about all that, but you know, it's all good. Jinx, I'd be happy to send you a pair of six gauge cable that I make to review and compare to anything you'd like to put them up against. Double shielded, very heavy. Hey, Jinx. Um, yeah, shoot me an email. Technodad55 at gmail.com. We'll talk about it. That sounds cool. You make a 10-foot pair and cost $75 total? <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. That's very awesome. What's up, Jim? What's going on? Luke. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Lost these. Where am I at? Where am I at? Hey, Chana, what do you think of a headphone app? Hey, Luke. Where is it? Where is it? Hold on. I just got this thing. It is a DAC and and a, and a headphone amp. This is the Apogee Groove. I'm actually reviewing this right now. Um, well, I'm using it to review it. I'm going to make a review hopefully this week. It's $200, but this is only for a computer. So it's got USB you connect it to your computer, and guess what it does? It adds an ESS Sabre DAC to your headphones. So you plug that into your headphones. I would imagine you can plug it into a Y connector and then plug that into some speakers or whatever, but it's a headphone amp and a DAC, and wow. Like, if you listen to a lot of streaming, if you listen to a lot of computer uh, music on your computer at your desk at work, and you use headphones, and you have like some nice headphones, like three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, two thousand dollar headphones, whatever it is. This guy is gonna be your best friend, and it was three hundred dollars. Now it's down to two hundred dollars, so that's definitely something cool. Um, hopefully, I'll have a video about that uh, this week. Maybe I don't know, man. With all the snow and got a bunch of people visiting, I have no idea if I'll have time. But but yeah, Luke. Um, so far, that's the only headphone amp I have tested or am testing. Why don't I set the Chroma 444 on my Apple TV 4K? I only see 420 and 422. Just set it on 422 and you should be good to go. Uh, oh, yeah. Kale's got uh, got some B&Ws. You got to loosen those purse strings. <laughs> I just saw a sound dampening video the other day, and the guy built a basic wood frame and used towels. It worked great and super cheap. Yeah. Yeah, you just need a frame and some cloth. That's pretty much it. Hey, thanks, Luke. Yeah, man, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I just wish these, uh, you know, in regards, Luke Luke said, he said, don't buy a $200 4K Blu-ray player, save your money and get the Panny, Panasonic UV820. Smart man he is. Yeah, the, I, I, I really just, uh, you know, back in the day, my mom used to buy, like two hundred dollar VCRs or hundred fifty dollar VCRs, and I, you know, like a smart man, I was about to say dumbass, but <laughs> like a smart man, I went and bought the Sony Super Video S Video. It was like their thousand dollar player v VCR. We're talking VCR, not not anything else. Um, it was a thousand bucks. I got it for eight hundred, and in a ten year span, she had spent twelve hundred dollars on. $200 VCRs and they all just ended up breaking after like, you know, after about two years. And guess what? Guess what? That Sony VCR is at her house and it still works. And this is this I bought in like, I don't know, like 96, 97, something like that. Thing's awesome. And if I was still watching videotapes, I would probably check about. But I'm not, so oh well. That that that's really the situation. You can buy a lot of the two hundred dollar things and they'll break or they'll have problems. I have problems with the Sony X seven hundred, I have problems with the LG UBK ninety. I don't have problems with the Panasonic UB eight twenty. I do not like the uh apps, streaming apps on the UBA twenty. That's another story. Um the Oppo UDP203, no problems. The Cambridge CXUHD, no problems. By the way, you guys, I will be selling my Cambridge Audio CXUHD, so make sure you um, follow me on Twitter. 
I think it's at technodad underscore. Um, there should be links in the description of this video anyway. But uh, I'll be putting that up on, uh, for sale on eBay, so that will only be United States only. Sorry, guys. But yeah, if you want to pick that up for under a thousand bucks, because I know they're going for thirteen hundred, and the Oppos are still going for like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. It is an Oppo UDP two hundred three clone, so you can get one for under a thousand bucks. So make sure you're following me on Twitter. I'll probably post that sale probably today or tomorrow, and we'll see. I put the um. And they go quickly, guys. They go quickly. I put up the Pioneer LX500 up for sale, and it sold in 45 minutes. That's right. 45 minutes. Crazy. Crazy. Um, Do-do-do. Oh, Timothy, no problem, man. Glad I could answer your question. Robert asks, Chana, I own the Elac B6 speakers. They're outstanding. 279 Can you one day do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Unified version upgrade at 500 a pair? Whoa. I'll see, man. I'll see if I can do that. That's going to take a little time. Uh, uh, everybody's saying that Elac B6 are terrific, so there you go. Could you make a video, Birdman Sim asked, could you make a video how to set the front two towers and center to output voice during Atmos? You mentioned something about Phantom Center in a previous video. Huh. I mean, you would have to, so, so to get Phantom Center, you really, and I, I just did it right now, you have to turn everything off. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm checking out those Kef R300s I showed you guys earlier in the video. And um, I turned off everything, so I just have the two speakers going. But in the amplifier assigned in the Yamaha A280, I turned off everything. So I, it, I just set everything to none. So when you set everything to none, everything comes out of the main front speakers. So you can do that, but set only the, the front speakers and your center speaker, and then everything comes out of there. But I'm not sure if Atmos information is going to come out of there if it's not an at, if an atmos channel is not turned on so i don't know if that that'll actually work uh jinx asks i love to see a video comparing svs anything subs to diy dayton audio ultimax 15 or 18 inch running crown xlx amps promise the diy will destroy the svs at quarter of the cost that's probably true dante what's up man how are you doing LP, so the Sony 4K player versus the LG 4K player. I have problems with both. Um, Birdman, any thoughts on the Amazon deal of the day? 9.2 receiver on sale right now. Birdman, um, do you want to tell me what model it is? Because I don't, where is, I don't know. Where is Amazon deal of the day? Where is that? Recently viewed. I don't ever go to that deal of the day thing. I don't have, I don't, I'm not seeing that up here. You know, drop me a link in the chat box and I'll, I'll go check it out right now. Can I use the presence as fronts also to bypass the Atmos and just hook up ceiling as presence? I'm not sure what you're asking me, Carlos. Shoot me a message on Facebook or whatever. Do 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 do. Um, Kevin, on the STRD N1080, when you set your speakers to large, it won't let you adjust the crossover. For towers, would you recommend changing speakers to small and then you could adjust it or leave it to large? Kevin, this is how all AV receivers work. If the speaker is set to large, there's no crossover. So even if you have towers, Set them to small and adjust the crossover accordingly to whatever your taste or whatever you like to do. Okay. Eric, for now, I think I'll use the 3070 to offload the three mains. When I can afford the Parasound, can't use that. But the Marantz Yamaha should work for now. Fine. I, I believe so, Eric. I can't. I'm, I'm, there's so many questions. I, I think I'm a little lost. But, um, yeah, if you want any more detail, technodad55 at gmail.com. Um, Shoot me a message, and then we can, like, talk about it later. 
Hi, Techno Dad. Uh oh, where's Evan? Thanks for the live stream. Question regarding side surrounds. Any thoughts on how the side surrounds should be, like distributed def tech or focused SVS prime elevation? Thanks. Oh, okay. So I made a video about this. Like, what surround speakers you should get? Should you get bipole? Should you get monopole? Uh, there's also dipole. I like bipole. Um, what you called it distributed? Yeah, I like that. I personally like that because there's no localization. However, Atmos, Dolby and Atmos recommend a monopole, like a regular style speaker that's focused, as you said in your comment here. I have an amazing um, 700, 750 RMS 2 ohm car sub. Any way I could get that working in a theater? I had lots of trouble finding a good amp for that. Yeah, it's hard to find an amplifier that's stable at 2 ohms. That's the problem you're having, right? I don't know, man. I know uh, California Audio Technology, C-A-T. They make some amazing, amazing custom speakers for like <laughs> for like yachts, like mega yachts. Like these, we're talking 300-pound speakers made out of something kind of like concrete. Anyway, they also make amplifiers, and those things are stable at half an ohm. So you could try checking them out, California Audio Technology, Technologies. Let's see if we can find them. Hold on. Oh yeah. No, this is them. This is them. Um Yeah. Mega yachts. Look, that's that's one of their things, mega yachts. <laughs> but yeah, check them out, man. Um they have amplifiers that are stable at half an ohm. I think that's probably one of the few companies that do that. I I don't know. I could be wrong, but check them out and see what's up there, all right? Who is that for? That was for Birdman Cinema. Lar Hines, what's up? Add most speakers placed in ceiling. Where's the place to install? Two rows of seats. Um, I would go in front of your first two seats and in between. Oh, no. If you have two rows of seating, I would go in front of your first seats and behind, just a little bit behind your rear seats. That's what I would do. Do, 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 do. Morning from Japan. What's up, Super Collector Clark? Wow, we are global, ladies and gentlemen. And 109 people watching. What's up? If you haven't commented or said anything in the chat, go ahead and tell me where you guys are from. Why not? And I was supposed to stop the live stream 15 minutes ago, but since everybody's here, we'll just kind of keep on going for a little bit longer because I've got nothing to do today but listen to speakers. So... <laughs> It's a pretty good day. Um, what's your favorite movie or and CD for testing surround systems? Oh, I was actually doing this upstairs before the live stream. So for surround sound, I really like John Wick, the bathhouse nightclub scene, due to the amount of different audio going on. You've got music. You've got you got quiet music, which is one of my favorite songs too. Is that Think by? Um, Man, I forget. I'm I'm hearing the song in my head. I just don't know what um what band it is. Anyway, that scene is that scene's very good because it's got that quiet music, and then when they quickly switch to the nightclub, they got loud loud music, and then you've got people talking, people walking, like grunting with the fighting, gunshots, people screaming, people running, all kinds of stuff. So I like that for um you know when he's breaking when he's shooting and breaking the glass there's a lot of like atmos effects going on there a lot in the surrounds so i like that one um for like clarity i really like dunkirk that first scene where you see where um where those first few gunshots start ringing out whizzing by your head like um that that little martin logan 5.1 speaker system i did a review on uh, i released that yesterday Whew. They did a phenomenal job, like the clarity and the crispness and the highs and mids are phenomenal. And um, of course, I was using the hundred, or actually two hundred fifty-five watts per channel in the Parasound Halo A52 Plus. So they definitely, you know, had a little help in that in that department. So 
There's that uh, for bass. You know, any any movie for like a subwoofer. You know, Jurassic Parks do well. Um, a Quiet Place. If you want, you know, if you're looking at bass that shakes your house, check out A Quiet Place. You know that kind of stuff. Do 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 do. I have a set of Ultra Towers. Was thinking about the Ultra Bookshelf for the surround sound system. What do you think? Um, Ashi Khan, I would go if you depending on if you like bipole or monopole, I would probably go with the um, Ultra Surrounds, um, the SVS Ultra Surrounds. Let here, I'll show you real quick. Do do do. Uh, speakers, Ultra Surround. So this is what you're looking at here. Let's go. Instead of another pair of bookshelves, you know these Ultra Surrounds are. Um, you know, bipolar, meaning they're going to love you one day and then they're going to kill you the other day. I'm just totally kidding. Totally ki kidding. They're, <laughs> they're bipolar, meaning they have two baffles and two sets of speakers. And they'll give you like a 180 degree, wait, 180 degree kind of sound off the speaker. So I, I prefer that over a standard speaker for uh, surround duties. And they are four ninety nine each, so a thousand dollars for two. Okay, what else we got? Kendall says, "Hey, Kendall, what's up? The crossover should be set of should be above the lowest that your speakers can go, so that the bass will blend properly. Best look for the points where the bass response starts dropping off, not the lowest." Yeah, I always go like ten hertz above, but it I I do things with you know I you know I I professionally do stuff with sound, so my you know I feel like you know I it's not like I have golden ears. I mean uh, maybe golden brown, but um, I think a lot of what it has to do with is just paying attention to what's going on in the music uh, or movie, and if the bass is overpowering or not overpowering or whatever the situation is, um, you know. I hear a certain way, and I use that to to do so. Do 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 do. So yeah, as far as crossovers are concerned, I I usually change it and I listen to something and then change it back and listen to the same thing and then change it back, listen to the same thing and see and kind of evaluate which one's better. If you can't do that, I totally understand. Excuse me, it's not an everyday thing. You gotta train your ears for this. Uh, Amazon are good enough. Oh, you guys are talking about cables. Yep. Technic Dad, what's up, Chana? What's up, Ken? What's going on? How are you doing, Ken from Denmark? Have hope you and your former colleague who's not working at Dyn Audio got in contact. Oh, what's up, Ken? Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for the um hookup. Uh, we did get in touch, and they are sending me the. Um, Emmett 20 speakers. I was looking for the Excite speaker to um, to check out, but they are sending, uh, they're going through their, um, they're actually getting the rid of those and they're moving to their Evoke line. So they're sending these Emmett or Emmett, Emmett probably, since it's Evoke and what was the other one? Excite, probably Emmett. They're like all emotions, right? Anyway, they're sending these over. Um, I think in about a week or so. So that's so that's gonna be cool. So thank you so much for the hookup. Um Chinito Lopez says, I like your channel. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Do you still review Oro 3D movies? Because I'm always looking to buy. Yeah, actually, um, I said this earlier in the video. Denon is sending me the X6500H. So once I get that in the rack, I can look at some more Oro 3D. Um, I think I have Dark Tower sent by Kale uh, Media. He sent me Dark Tower. Thank you for that again. Uh, I still haven't watched it yet because I've had the Anthem in the rack and I've had and I currently have the Yamaha in the rack. So once I get the Denon, then I'll check out some more Oro 3D. I tried extension cords with speaker wires, and it sounds great. <laughs> yeah, th th they'll definitely work. Lamp cord makes 
speaker cable, the best speaker cables. Cabling, snake oil. Yep. Assuming that you're thinking, uh, okay, that's about BMWs. LOL, a guy surfing two thousand dollars for three feet, <laughs> or spending the yeah, right. No, that's that's rough, man. Hey, but at this, uh, um, what does that say? Gear laden, gear laden lad says Ray Kimber is the real deal. I don't know about Ray, but uh, what was nice about Kimber Cable was I. I saw them at CES 2018, 2019, and I know Gene Della from Audioholics rates their 12TC cable as some of the best measuring cable. And he, I, I don't know if he recommends it, but he said that those cables measure really, really well. So I, I, I talked to them and called them, and they actually asked me what equipment I'm connecting. And I told them, and they're like, well, you know, the cheaper cable will actually be better for that setup. You know, so that's why we're going with the 8TC and the 8PR. They said the TC, 8TC might be a little overkill as well. But, you know, for me, my purpose is they look cool and I'm a sucker for braided cables. So I wanted to check those out for sure. But I liked that whole vibe where they're like, yeah, you don't need to spend this much or, or you know, these would be overkill for your system. So go with these. And even those, you know, go with the 8TC or the 8PR, those will work perfectly fine. I like that. I like that they're not just like, oh, you want the $600 pair of cables? Cool. Yeah, we'll sell you those. No, let's let's be realistic here. The $80 cables will be just fine. I mean, it's still relatively expensive, but I like the way that they handled uh, my request and the whole situation. And that's kind of cool when companies say like, hey, don't buy the super expensive one. You're only going to need something at this level. That's pretty cool. Uh, where was this? Okay. Uh, what's your stance on power conditioners? Um, Dante five H seven ask, I say, just get a good one. Um, Panamax makes some good ones. I do have, I am running a Furman elite, uh, 15. I, uh, I, I, it's at like $750, but I got it for like way cheaper on, um, Oh, uh, like on eBay, look for new stuff on eBay. As far as power conditioners go, you'll you might be surprised how much money you can save. Expert Joey, you needed four heads on the VCR to get crystal clear pause screen. Yep, you do. You did. Uh, Michael Walker, have you heard the Nakamichi 9.2.4 update for Dolby Vision? Is that what you're talking about? I just got an email from them, so I think they're ready to send me a new setup, the 9.2 setup, uh, Michael, uh, when that when they get some shipments or some units shipping. So I did tell them that I would love to review it and check it out and help with the update and see what's up. So they're going to send me that. Um... Are you subscribed to PewDiePie? No, I'm not. I don't think so. Any plans for buying a new TV this year, Technodad? This year seems to be a tough cho a tough choice. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm not planning on buying a TV uh, this year. Not at all. Uh, I'm still rocking the E6 OLED. There are newer, better. Um, I, do, I do like the new Sony A9G. Is that right? A9G? That's their OLED, right? A8F, A9F. A9G, yeah. I like that one. Um, mainly, I don't like the whole leaning back thing. I think that's... Uh, I don't like that. That's just me. But anyway, yep. Um, no TVs. I'm not buying a TV. Although, the you know, if you're looking for budget level, and I don't know which country you're in. Um, I forget. But I'm not sure if you can get, like, Hisense or TCL. But I don't think you're looking for, like, a cheap TV. I think you're looking for something premium. So, you know, what about the Panasonic? Uh, you, got, you guys should get Panasonic over there, right? Those OLEDs probably look pretty awesome. Uh, LP, would you DJ for a video? I actually did that on my music channel, Chana Da Silva. So if you want to subscribe to that channel, I'm, I'll probably do more stuff like that over there. Um... 
Timothy, why are you only selling in the USA? Because of uh, shipping and customs, and then there's also the power stuff too. Because the you know the 4K player was made for the United States, so uh, you know power is different everywhere else, and you'll have to get a converter. And I don't know if you want to like introduce that kind of interference into your system, that kind of thing. My first VCR was bought in 1985. Was Panasonic. It lasted eight years. That thing was a beast for three fifty. Yeah, Jim. You know they don't. They just don't make things like they used to. They they make things um, with the intent of you buying something in the next three to four years. Um, have you ever heard of DevTech speakers? If so, what's your take, uh, JG? Yes, I have heard of DevTech speakers. In fact, I have some DevTech speakers on the way. I talked about this earlier in the stream. These are the pair of DevTech speakers I have on the way. They're bookshelves. They're the D11s, I believe. Yep, that's what it says. Yeah, they're a thousand a pair. Um, if you're talking about like floor standards, um, I've heard plenty of them, and they <laughs> they sound phenomenal. Do 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 do. Hello, Matt Sullivan. How are you doing? What's up? Hello, everybody, buddy. Oh, we got Poland in the house. It's awesome. Somebody said, buy a used Sunfire amp to power your sub. Oh, maybe that was for the 2-ohm sub woofer. Matt Sullivan, Ontario, Canada. Japan, Orlando, Colorado, Dallas, Texas. What's up, Techno Dad from Waco, Texas? What's up, Franchise 254? What's going on? Toronto, Ohio, Nebraska, too much snow dude Derek I don't know man we got 11 11 11 10 11 feet of snow three days three days you should see what it looks like outside it's ridiculous I have some people some friends up from LA and they're like oh my gosh there's so much snow I'm like yeah I know I've been living it I've been shoveling it it's it's an annoying annoying now uh, Jacksonville, Florida, no snow over there. What's up, Brian? Uh, Jinx, are you into two-channel music and or higher-end gear or mostly in mid-fi? Well, Jinx, you know, I really like Focal, and I really would like to change out my studio monitors that I'm looking at right now to some Focals, and they're like four grand each. And they have all the, you know, flax drivers and the beryllium inverted dome tweeter. I uh, really like that sound. Uh, their hi-fi stuff, I, I just can't afford, you know. And if these companies would like to send me stuff, I would happily review it. So, yeah, that's all. I'm totally into it. But, you know, like the B&Ws are, that I heard are awesome, man. I, I can't wait to get those 7 Series in. But, you know, a lot of these companies, they're like, we don't need people on YouTube reviewing our speakers. Or, you know, they're kind of like that. The hi-fi, definitely the hi-fi people. Uh, whoa, Saudi Arabia in the house. What is up? L.A. All right, what's up, Walden? Man, I got to go to L.A. this week. Oh, it's going to suck. All the traffic, man. Oh, what do you think about Samsung not making any more Blu-ray players? Do you think with a second company leaving, Blu-ray is a dying breed? Well, I think in a mass market, kind of thing streaming is where everything is headed i think we're gonna still have those diehards that want 4k uhd discs i mean dvd's still outselling blu-ray you know so excuse me our um carl asks are uhd discs significantly better than apple 4k or just slightly well that depends you know i guess that depends on your system you know audio wise somebody knocking on the front door Audio wise, I think, um, you know, disc is going to be better as far as no compression on the audio for Dolby Atmos, DTSX. Um, or if you're watching any kind of Chris Nolan movie, it's going to be, you know, what, true HD. So it depends on your system. It depends on what you're into. It just depends. But, you know, to it, it's really subjective. You know, is it that better of an experience? 
I mean, I stream a lot from Voodoo when I don't want to like wait for a movie. If we're, you know, my wife and I, it's Friday night or whatever, and we're just staying in, like, yo, let's check out what are the new movies on Voodoo because it'll have Atmos, it'll have Dolby Vision, and, you know, it'll be in 4K. Oh, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Dog was being a little restless. Anyway, it's kind of tough to say. It's very subjective. You know, it's either you prefer it a uh, disc or you don't. Convenience of streaming is 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 fantastic. Like you jump onto Netflix, you got so many 4K UHD titles there now. Um, some are, you know, HDR. Some aren't. But you know, whatever. It's just up to you. Lord of the Rings Fellowship. That bass drop at the beginning is still awesome. Yes, Jim, that bass drop is still awesome. I totally forgot about that, you know. Always seeing new stuff. But, yeah, that is classic. It is awesome. Love it. What about Hacksaw Ridge, the battleship scene? Hacksaw Ridge actually uh, won awards for uh, audio mixing, so that is definitely a good one. I think I sold my copy a while back, so I'll have to buy that again at some point. Uh, 4K UA, 4K Blu-ray must have Atmos or DTSX. I mean, yeah, some do, some don't. <laughs> Golden brown toasted ears. <laughs> oh, Joey, that's hilarious. I iMac enhanced. Do you mean IMAX? Oh, okay. Any word on the TC TCL Dolby Vision update for the P607 or 617 to work with Xbox One? Um, Eric, I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. They, were, they said that they were going to attempt to do it. So, you know, who knows? They might, they might get it done. But, yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath, man. Uh, Russell, what's your say on the AV receiver 2500H by Denon? Uh, that's a good entry-level receiver. Um, let's look it up, shall we? Do, 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 do. I like to go to Crutchfield just when I'm looking up receivers because they have a lot more information than, like, Amazon. And it's like and, – and, like, Best Buy? Oh, man, I hate their website. And I can't get any information off of there. Okay, 95 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Not bad. T THD, total harmonic distortions, 0.08%. Two channels driven, not bad. Uh, seven channels. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. Uh, plays high res audio. It's got DV DSD support. Let's, uh, let's look at the back. What are we at? 800 bucks? Wow, that's rough. Oh, you get seven, seven HDMIs. All right. Um, I forget who's asking this question, but I would go to Amazon and type in the Denon X2400H. Boom. And you're at $399. Um, uh, let's see. Um, 95 watts per channel here. What do we got here? 95 watts per channel here. Harmonic distortion. This is almost exactly the same. Um, not really sure what the new models got over it, but this is 400 bucks as opposed to 800 bucks, which is the new one. So that's on you. I would go with this one because, yeah, I would just go with that one. I'm not sure because I, my 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 thing is like okay, the new from the Denon 400 series to the 500 series, so like X 2400H to X 2500H, there's not a huge difference. How, however, the X 3400 to 3500, 20, uh, 4400 to 4500, 6400 to 6500, all have IMAX enhanced. That's the biggest thing. Oh, okay, okay, I'm wrong. They also have AirPlay 2, AirPlay 2, and Alexa support. So the Alexa support got better and AirPlay got better with the 500 series. So that's the only difference with the X2400H and the X2500H is better AirPlay and um, better Alexa support. So if that's important to you, spend the extra $400. If it's not, I would go with the X2400H. 
when you get into the higher models of Denon, the difference is those two things and then IMAX enhanced. My bad. Whoa. See, I, see, I can admit when I'm wrong. It's easy. I just had those confused. My bad. Uh, franchise 254. Yes, ex I I haven't done a new video on the on the PB. Uh, sorry, on the UB820, and I'm I'm about to. That's that was that's part of my plan. I've got you guys. You have no idea. I have like so many videos like planned. It's crazy. It's just a matter of time of actually doing all this stuff and you know dealing with life. I don't do this full time. I already I have four jobs before this channel, so. It's on my list of things to do, franchise. So hopefully, man, I was trying to get it done this week, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can. Brian, my condo's on the fourth floor. I do not want to totally annoy my neighbors upstairs. Is there a chance I could still somehow run Atmo setup without installing speakers in my ceiling? Uh, Brian, I would go with the Prime Elevation speakers by SVS. Those are probably going to be your best bet. Is the Sony X800 Blu-ray player good? Um, the old one was I had I had no problems with it. Some people had freezing problems, some people had other problems, but I personally had no problems uh, with that player. So, yeah, I mean the new one's coming out, the X100 M2, in a month or two. No, next month, March, or is it April? I forget. I forget. So, you know, if you're still looking at some X800s and if there's still some around, they're probably going to drop in price if they're still around. Remember, that player's two years old. Do, 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 do. Kendall says Panasonic Plasmas were among the best back in the day. Yes, Kendall, they were. In fact, I think 2016 is when 2014 to 2016 is when I had mine. It got broken. It was a bad, bad situation. And it wasn't it wasn't the TV's fault. It just broke. We won't get into that. I don't think my wife wants me to talk about that. So anyway, Daryl Austin, what's up? You're late. Hey, what's up, man? I just decided to keep keep this going for a little bit longer. What is the best budget receiver in 2019? My answer to that is a receiver from 2018. Uh, do, 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 do. 74 in Houston, Texas. Awesome. Oh, my almost, I'm almost caught up with these comments. Wow. Xbox Dolby Vision incompatible with my Vizio. Dolby Vision, Dolby Vizio TV sucks. Uh, it's, it's about the Dolby Vision Profile 5. That's really the situation. Some TVs can support it, some, some can't. And that's, that's really it. Barbados, absolutely no snow. <laughs> That's right. Timothy, lucky out there. Derek says he's looking to replace his dual PC 2000s with dual PC 4000s. You know, that's the the PC 4000 is something I definitely want to check out. The PB 4000 is just way too big in my living room. I mean, it's not way too big. It's it's just there. It's just there. It's just like big big box and it's just sitting there and it's in my living room i would love to trade that out for a pc 4000 uh techno dad do you recommend the denon x 4500h yes i do i highly recommended the earlier one the x 4400h and if you don't need airplay 2 if you don't need alexa like new better alexa support and if you don't need imax enhanced get the x 4400h it's like six hundred dollars off okay i feel it's important to buy uhd discs not because of the quality but also for not dolby atmos to take over completely when we need competitive formats like dts and oro 3d that's a very good point there because you know dolby atmos is kind of cornering the market of all the streaming services good point Any integrated amp recommendations? Um, it depends on your price point. I have the Parasound Halo integrated. I think that thing's around $2,500. Um, but they have a new one that's $2,500, so you can probably get the older one for a little bit less if they're still around. Contact my Klipsch dealer, Corey, for some Parasound gear. I, You know, I noticed some of the Yamaha stuff looked pretty good, like seven or $800. They have some uh, AKM DACs, I think, in there. So check out those. 
Uh, hopefully I can get some Yamaha integrateds in for review. I did talk to Yamaha about that at CES. Just kind of waiting to see what's up. Uh... The audio on Bohemian Rhapsody 4K Blu-ray is phenomenal. Really? I'll have to check that out. Is it in Atmos? It is. Oh, look at this. I'm learning stuff, too, from you guys. Uh, hi. Any recommendation on two-channel amp for listening vinyl? My setup is Audio-Technica, LP120 Black, and Definitive Technology Tower Speakers. Thank you. Um... Shiva Blue Green, why don't you send me an email? Um, oh, look, it, it's happening right now on the ticker. Technodad55 at gmail.com. And I'll give you some options. You know, I'll, I'll need some better, like, you know, constraints, like what's your price range and all that kind of nonsense. And um, yeah, but yeah, we'll figure something out for you. That'll be easy. Derek, I still have Plasma Panasonic 3D 55 inch. Nice. Uh, Jim asks, when did the new receiver models usually come out? They they don't have like a set schedule, man. Like they just they just come out. Marantz slowly put them out in 2018, starting at the like second quarter of the year, and then the Denon ones came out toward the end of the year. That kind of thing. So yeah, we don't know. How to get my sub play with music on Denon 3400H. Uh, LP, you need to go to, um, I forget where it's subwoofer or speakers, and you need to do LFE plus main. That's what you need to do. You need to turn that on. LFE plus main. Rolando, no problem, man. Um, um, uh, Raphael asks, I have an out of production Emotiva sub. I want to go dual. Would it be okay with the similar spec sub from SVS, or should I go ahead and buy new matching subs? Greetings from Mexico. What's up, Raphael? Uh, you know, in a perfect world, I would go with matching subwoofers because what you're trying to do is... So in, in a frequency curve on some subwoofers, you know, there might be a dip somewhere, and what you do by adding a second uh, subwoofer, you get rid of the dip, but only if that subwoofer has a very similar if not the same frequency curve. So when you, it, it's tough to say, you know, if you spec out, you know, su a subwoofer with the same specs can not have the same response curve. So I would, if you can, if you can afford it, I would go with two new ones. Give the other one to somebody else. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy birthday. I don't know. Um, Jinx says, try out the Yaquin MC100B tube integrated. That's what he uses. Technobismal, have you ever used a second receiver as an input hub for your main system? Because I might need to do that for my setup. I'm not 100% sure about what you mean. Franchise, glad I'm doing an update for the Panasonic UB820. You'll be surprised by the update, and thanks for acknowledging. Hey, no problem, man. Trying, I'm trying to get to everybody. I know a lot of you guys are having a conversation in the chat as well, so that's very cool. Birdman Cinema, I don't think it's letting me post links to the deal of the day. Oh. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, you know what? I have that turned off, derps. I'm sorry. I, I guess, uh, you know what? Hold on. It might be in my review, waiting for review or something like that. Do 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 do. Let's see. Go to comments. No, nothing's held for review. Oh, I guess it's just not letting you do it. All right, here. Let me just search Amazon deal of the day. Gold box deals. Oh, here, deal of the day. Deal of the day electronics. Here we go. Let's try to find this real quick. Deal of the day, four ninety nine, nine channel. Oh, oh, this is the okay. So this is the other. This is the fancy version of the NR seven eight seven.
So here's the NR787, and here's the Amazon deal of the day, which is the RZ730. This is like the same thing as this one. Pretty much the same thing. Same price and all that. This one is the more expensive one. Okay, the RZ line is more expensive, right? So, um, I mean, if we look at the back of these things, they're like, I, they're, they're virtually identical. Here's the 787, and then here is the um, RZ730. So, I mean, the, the only thing that you're missing, now see, this says THX on it. So, if this is THX certified, they're pretty much exactly the same. Uh, 100 watts per channel, and this does 5.2.4. This does 7.2.2. And now with 11 channel pre out, does this have pre out? Okay, so that's the big difference. This one's got the pre outs. The, the RZ730 has 11 channel pre out, so this will process 11 channels, whereas the NR787 will not. Okay. Where is this? Where, where? Oh, here, see? So you can do a full Atmos with that. You cannot do a full Atmos with this. See, this only, oh, my light turned off. This only supports nine channels. Yeah, so that's a big difference. So if you're talking about this versus that, yeah, you know, I would go with this one. Damn, I wish I had $500 to spend. I'd buy this to review it. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Who is that? That was Birdman Cinema. All right, so my light over here just went out of juice, so I'm probably going to let's let's end the live stream here. How long have we been going for? Quite a while. Oh, almost 2 hours. Crazy. Uh Techno Bismol, that's kind of rough, man. Shoot me an email uh, so I can hear exactly what's going on. Um, what is going on here? Still no sound from the sub when playing music, huh? Uh, LP, you've you've emailed me before. Just uh, um, yes, we are talking about the RZ seven thirty. Um. JG says, I keep hearing Morantz is the best receiver in terms of sound quality. Sound quality, but it, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I actually haven't had any uh, Morantz receivers to look at. I've heard some, but I haven't had any in-house. Um, I know Youthman has had um, Adenin, Morantz, Anthem. Um, so, you know, you just check with him. To ha you know, have him, you know, shoot him an email or go to his website or whatever and ask him about it. Um you know, it's a very subjective thing, though. It's kind of rough. I'm now running a 12.4 setup, 12.1.4 setup, and the sound is ridiculously good. But how can I maximize the output with the crossover settings? I get confused in that area. Uh, JC Burt, um, let's try this. You know, if you're are you, if you're running towers, you could probably change the crossovers. Your Atmos speakers, I'd, I I would need to know what all your speakers are. So why don't you do this? Because we're gonna shut this down right now. Uh, why don't you shoot me an email, technodad55 at gmail.com when you get a chance. Uh, tell me about your room. Tell me about all your speakers and all that kind of stuff. Derek says he's done with uh, Onkyo. Hey, TD, is a Panasonic UB820 different from the UB900? No. No, no, wait, no, wait. The UB900 has THX certification. The UB820 does not. Wayne, hey, TD. Oh, no, that was Wayne. Okay, no problem, Wayne. Have you ever heard of Polk Audio PSW-125 sub? I've had it for five years now. But it's quite underrated. Why? I'm not really sure, Russell. Hey, Big Kane, thanks for the super chat, buddy. Boom. Um, do you think Elac is set more for music or more for home theater? I think Elac is more for music. Um, would you use secondary receiver for all your, your mostly legacy components? Oh, and use the main outputs on the secondary receiver to connect your main system. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, you could, I mean, you just have to, you, you got to be careful with your gain staging. Unless the older one with all the legacy components has like a left and right pre out, and then you can use that pre out to go into your 
new amplifier or the bigger one, newer one. Um, Birdman, if I don't have a 9.2 channel receiver, that would be a good option. Yeah, I mean, for $500, 9.2 channel, that RZ730, it's, it looks good on paper, man. It looks good on paper. Uh, 11 channels of processing, so you could add a power amp um, to to fill it out into 11 channels, yeah. 500 bucks, nah, that's, not, that's not bad. Uh, the Denon counterpart would be the X4400H, which is running at 900. Just as so you have a price comparison. Kendall, yeah, yeah. Kendall says Youth Man bought the Marantz 8012. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Hello, TD with 7.2.4 for SBS Ultra. Is the Marantz SR8012 enough for full power or add a... Honestly, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that one. That's that's pretty rough. Any news on the Nakamichi 9.2.2 Atmos review, uh, Cajun Pair? Uh, they sent me an email, and I will be looking at it once they get items to ship. They'll ship me one, and I'll check it out. All right, guys. Looks like we've been here for almost two hours. I, I, I want to thank you. My water's gone. Oh. My water's gone. My uh, my light over here that was lighting the side of my face is out. So it looks like this light will last for an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> At least I know that now. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for showing up for the live stream, talking with each other, talking with me, you know, answering people's question in the ch Oh, no, this is the chat. In the chat. Uh, thank you guys so much. I am excited about 2019. Lots of cool stuff in the works. Um, you know, got the new merch. Boom. Love it. Love it. Um, and if you want me to make a shirt with your system on it, shoot me an email or leave comments in, in the comments here or if you're live in the chat box. Well, uh, we're going to end this, so make it quick. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you guys so much Uh for hanging out on this Saturday. I know a lot of people have a lot of stuff to do. So I truly appreciate you guys. You know, thank you for watching. Thank you for um, sharing the videos. Oh, yeah. We crossed the 40,000 subscriber mark, too, like yesterday or today. I, I'm, I'm, I wasn't sure. I woke up today and it said 40K. So um, looking to do another giveaway. Hopefully, uh, one of these brands will give me something cool to give away for you guys. Um, again, um, oh, Derek, it was your first time here in the live stream. Thanks, man. Thanks for stopping by. Um, you guys have um, have fun. Be safe. You know, all that stuff. Uh, yeah. All right. Oh, oh, wait. We got. Hold on. We got. We got the end screen. And there we go. Boom. <laughs> Oh, live stream is, is is really fun. Anyway, thank you guys so much again um, for hanging out. Uh, for those on the replay, thank you for watching the replay. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you so much. Take it easy, guys. Peace.